uh, hopefully, Paul Brennan is in the Wellington studio right now. Paul, uh, sorry about that. Just a I slight ho- uh, hopefully I, juxtaposition I, I, I there. Am. We yes, yeah, we jumped into <laughs> Billy Ocean. Yeah, yeah, yeah we jumped into the to, ocean. Great to be with you, Leanne. Great to be back. Hi, everybody. Um, here I am. It's been an interesting uh, little journey. Yes. We can talk about that one Round day. Of Don't want to go on too, too long oh. about it. But, it's great. Uh, Paul. It, it, the sun is shining. It's a beautiful day. Feeling good, and and that's a beautiful song. And um, we're doing uh, live material again. And, and I think a few weeks ago, someone mentioned Daryl's place or house, as it is now. And that was a um, an online TV show started by Daryl Hall about five or six years ago, give or take. And uh, that's where he invites artists in, and uh, you know, and they just sort of jam and and do versions of songs, hit songs, Hall and Oates songs, and uh, the artist songs as you, you just heard in that case uh, with Diane Birch. And, you know, it sounds amazing. So I thought we would start with a track from Daryl's Place, try and end with one. Uh, I really like that song by Diane Birch. She's from Portland, Oregon, so very mm. sort of woke part of the USA. And she had a hit back in 2009 with that song, Nothing But a Miracle. Uh, it right. had limited sort of airplay in this country. I remember on RNZ we played it a few times. But uh, her and Daryl together, I think just uh, what a great combination, a nice way to start this hour. Mm. I haven't heard of her, actually, I have to say. And she's still relatively young, isn't she? She was born 83. Yeah, yeah, she's young and, and she's, um, I mean, she's, she's quite the star, but in a, in a certain sort of market, like I say, uh, Portland, Oregon, quite a woke sort of part of the United States. And uh, I guess you'd say the, the student university crowd but she's, she's also got that sort of elements of, you know, sort of country music in there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've, I've listened to quite a few of her songs. And again, for a young person, you know, the lyrics are very deep and <laughs> meaningful. Yeah, put it <laughs> right. Way, you know? Yeah, nice. It was, it, was, it was good to hear that because you're so used to hearing, um, well, you know, we get Hall & Oates, don't we? So Daryl collaborating with someone else. I, I, you know, he, he's still singing, isn't he, these days? Yes, he is. He's um, in his, I think, mid-70s now. Uh, for those who are interested, there's a video that's, that's just popped up in the last week or so. Uh, Bill Maher, who's uh, quite uh, a well-known um, a comedy talk show host in the US on HBO, has done an, an hour with him where they just sort of sit at a bar and talk about old times and all, all the things they've done. They're a sort of similar age group. And Daryl Hall's a really interesting... Uh, sorry, um, yeah, it is uh, Daryl Hall, John Oates, isn't that? Yeah, Daryl Hall. Mm. He's an interesting mm. guy, and, and he, he, he makes the point in that, um, that sort of uh, chit-chat session with Bill Maher that, that uh, Hall and Oates weren't as close as you, you, you think. They more <laughs> right. were a business partnership rather than a creative partnership. Most of the songs that Hall and Oates had hits with, he wrote with... Um, one of his um, uh, ex-wives, uh, Daryl Hall. So, you know, it's interesting okay. to, you know, to hear the, the backstory over so many decades uh, sort of uh, um, come into more focus and it's more than you think. So if people are interested, uh, seek out that interview. Bill Maher with uh, Daryl Hall. It's really interesting. Yeah, fantastic. Okay, well, thank you for that first track. Uh, it was it was a pretty uh, song and a nice kind of slow way to ease into best of live because sometimes live can be pretty raucous. But next can up, be. we've yeah. got <laughs> it can be next up we've got uh, a track from Billy Ocean. Oh, we're playing Billy Ocean next. Yeah, well, this is um, uh, this I've I've always been a fan of Billy Ocean. He's he's from Jamaica, of course, Kingston, Jamaica. Made it big in the UK. His first big hit was uh, Love Really Hurts Without You. Um, mm. And he was very active through the 80s. He's a favourite in the UK. Uh, maybe he's even been knighted recently. I- I'm not sure. Could be wrong on that. But uh, this is a, um, a version of a song uh, that he had a hit with in the 80s that he did live on Channel 7 uh, in Australia uh, back in 2005. And, you know, he was getting on an age then... Incredible dreadlocks, <laughs> just <laughs> incredible dreadlocks in the, <laughs> Love in the, the video. Love the dreads. Yeah. yeah. The thing is, though, um, given his age, how long he's been, he's obviously looked after himself. How long he's been in the business, you know, it, it is just top of his game, is all I'd say. And okay, um, you, you have to you know, like ballads and sort of uh, uh, touchy feely songs, probably to to really appreciate this. But it's a a great example of. A, a song played with one guy singing with a guitar 
on network television in Australia. He just nails it beautifully. And that is his version, a uh, live version of Suddenly, which we're about to hear. That's super special, Paul. Really lovely. He's pretty good. It's his own song. He's playing his own guitar and he's singing and he's in his, into his 70s. He sounds just like he did when we first heard him in the early 70s. It's amazing the mm. uh, longevity of some of these artists. And I guess that's what you get when you look after yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. He's British. Uh, he's Britain's biggest black recording star. He sold over thirty million records, apparently. Yeah, he's huge, and uh, like I say, uh, you know, they, he's uh, the Brits love him. Um, I mm. remember seeing a very um, funny thing with Noel Edmonds once uh, when they were out and about, and uh, 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 it was a trick that Noel Edmonds, who lives in New Zealand now. Um, played on him where right. uh, they were walking down the, uh, I think the um, Brighton or Blackpool or something, and people were coming up and they were mm. asking constantly for Noel's autographs, but not, not mm. Billy's. Not Billy couldn't quite Billy. work out what was going on. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm the star here. I'm the star. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. And Leave he's had Noel some, he's, he's, Yeah, he's had some great, uh, it was a setup, of course. But yeah, so uh, nice to hear that. Live on Channel 7, Breakfast TV. Back in uh, 2000, did I say 05, I think, quite a way back. Uh, so, yeah. you know, uh, even now, he's, he's older still. He'll be pushing 80 soon. That's right. He will be. I love that song of his, Red Light. Do you remember that one? Red Light spells danger. Spells danger. Yes, I, I do. love that song. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Red uh, Light spells danger. Yeah. Yeah. Can't hold one. back no longer. Yep. That's right. And L Love Really Hurts Without You, When the Going Gets Tough, you know, all of those great yep. songs. Caribbean Queen. The Colour of Love. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Get, get out of my car and into my dreams or whatever Into it was. my dreams. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> we were, yeah. uh, Shane and I were trying to work out that, whether it was get out of my dreams and into my car or the other way around. But no, he's, he's a great artist. And uh, I mean, he... Yep. Yeah, he, he sold a lot of records, and uh, but he did sound very, very nice. Good, good choice, and and that particular version, live on Australian telly, which w which wouldn't be an easy environment to to really feel your song, would it? You know, in many ways. No, because it, it's it's so set up, isn't it? And you know, it's like mm. go now, start, <laughs> and you've <laughs> only got a you know a, a certain amount of time, you know, that's very tightly controlled to to do the performance in, and and you want to get it right. You know, you want you want to nail yeah. it, and he he certainly did. Mm. Mm. Oh, just beautiful! Now this next song. Well, I've got uh, Joe Walsh next. Does that yep. does that compute with your order? Very good. Yes, it does. Okay. Joe good. Walsh. Yeah, that, that's good. Uh, of course, the Eagles guitarist. Uh, but this is him yep. uh, from from very early days, isn't it? Yeah, when he was uh, part of the James Gang in the late sixties, early seventies, was where he he got his start. I actually met Joe Walsh once, and it was very uh, fleeting, but very interesting and entertaining. He was uh, in New Zealand, it would have been in, oh, the late 80s uh, for a show. I think he was here under his own name. And he came in, I was the producer of The Breakfast Show uh, at that point on the ZM station in Wellington, and he came in for an interview. And he turned up um, at about a quarter to eight in the morning so hype it up you is it that you wouldn't believe the energy you know you can almost feel the force of nature coming through the door um <laughs> right. he, he sort of was, he was wearing these sort of weird pants with uh, stars and sort of moon graphics on them no mm. shoes and this sort of tie-dyed shirt with this hair everywhere and it's hi how you doing it was all like that <laughs> and yeah. he, it, it was so hyper he went in and he was very entertaining um on for about 10 minutes uh, shook everybody's hand and then just like a whirlwind just left. And I've never forgotten that. It was only, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes in the presence mm. of Joe Walsh, but uh, I'll never forget it. Um, of course, he settled down a hell of a lot uh, since then, those sort of wild mm. days, given up all the alcohol, all the drugs, happily married, I think, to um, George Harrison's uh, wife's sister. So, or is it Ringo Starr? That's no, right. Ringo Starr's wife, sister. So they're related. Yeah, it's Ringo, so, isn't it? Ringo, That's right. Yeah, Ringo went to hospital, I think, a couple of days ago. So I hope yeah. he's okay. They've had to sort of um, uh, put on halt the uh, all-star uh, band tour in the States. Mm. But this is, uh, uh, this is from the Crossroads Guitar Festival, big festival, uh, back in 2004. The bass player is Duck Dunn. If you want to look him up, you'll see that he's been okay. everywhere. He's the late Duck Dunn. And um, this is the, um, the live version that they did at that uh, guitar festival 
of the James Gang song Funk 49. And I think you'll really enjoy it. It's a great Joe Walsh live uh, Funk 49, Paul, which is a great song. He, he, it's a different treatment, isn't it? Yeah. I love the way they sort of, uh, the guitarists talk to each other through it. You know, the, he'll play one little bit and then the the other, uh, I don't know who the, on bass I mentioned was uh, Duck Dunn. I, don't, I didn't look into who the other guitarist was, the rhythm guitarist. But they sort of have this exchange, you know, like they're talking to each other through their guitars through that track, which I think is quite entertaining. Um, but it is. Um, such a cool, you know, it's a funky track. Mm. It's been, always been one of my favourites. And I love the way Joe says something like, ooh, that's nice, <laughs> halfway through the song. <laughs> yeah. He's a great entertainer, Joe Walsh, and incredible yeah. player. A again, oh, another yeah. one of the guests that Daryl Hall had at uh, Daryl's house. And um, uh, the... Um, uh, Smoky Mountain Way, is it? That, that, that's the, his song, isn't the it? Rocky the, Mountain version, Way, the, the Rocky, Rocky Mountain Way. Rocky Mountain mm. Way. The one, the one he, mm. he said he wrote that um, while uh, staying at a friend's house in Colorado, sitting in the backyard looking out over the mountains, wondering what he'd do next. And the song just <laughs> came to him. Um, but uh, the version that him and Daryl do in, in that particular performance is amazing as well, just mm. harking back to the first track that we had. Yeah, wonderful. Some great artists today already. Next up, uh, a Kiwi flavour, so we all know them, the Finn Brothers. I'm an absolute fan of these two. Mm. I think they should be knighted. I've been saying that for a long time. If anyone deserves a knighthood, both of these Finn Brothers do. They've done more for New Zealand music and culture, identity. Um, you know, you could rattle off so many words than anyone mm. else I can think of, really. Uh, I, I saw uh, Neil Finn in the street in Auckland not too long before I left Auckland, and I almost, I almost plucked up the courage to to go up to him and say, "Hey, man, you know, so much respect. Uh, mm. <laughs> I'm <Yeah>. Paul. <laughs> I love you. Um, you should have. I, 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 I should have. I should have. Um, a friend of mine did that with James Taylor when he saw him in the street and uh, and mm. had a great inter uh, exchange with him, but. But I didn't do it on that occasion. You know, he looked like he was with other people. But uh, mm. these two, uh, you know, I I am just such huge fans of them. And I really mm. think this country owes them more respect than... Um, yeah, I agree. You yeah. know, than they've been mm. shown. I don't know what yes, you've got to so. do to, to, you know, maybe they're in the Hall of Fame, but they deserve, you know, dual knighthoods. They really do. If, if, if the thing's still going, if that gong is still around... Mm -hmm. I can't think of uh, of anyone more deserving than those two. But anyway, in 2004, I think it was, they did an album called Everyone Is Here. It was sort of like a family kind of feel where they sort of, you know, they, they, they're sort of the family thing came through in their songs. And this is, uh, again, a, another Australian recording um, done mm. in Melbourne in 2010 of uh, one of the songs from that Everyone Is Here album. And that mm. is Won't Give In. And I just think it's superb. You know, everyone I love is here. And it was yeah. one given. Mm. Yeah, uh, they are fantastic. Uh, yeah, I can't stop going on about them. And the time mm. has come for them to be recognised. I wonder if they've actually turned turned down uh, a knighthood or something in the past, have maybe, they? Or maybe they have. I don't know. I haven't heard about that. I mean, who who does turn that down, though, usually? Um, yeah. And if they have, uh, fair enough, it's up to them. But, you know, mm. there has to be something. The other day on this show, we were discussing naming streets after famous musicians because we discussed the Tina Turner Highway <laughs> and people were writing oh, in right. with suggestions. But we could have, you know, a, a street or, or, or a statue of the two of them or something or, you know, anything. Statue if, if they would be don't. good. Statue would be good, yeah. wouldn't it? Mm. Chawamutu is where they're from, I think, in the Waikato, so I guess there's a, yeah. probably a Finn Street. They'd be crazy mm. not to have done that in Chawamutu. I know. You know, but they're bigger than that. They, you know. The, the, you yeah. Know, the, yeah, they yeah. are. I totally agree. That's a that was a beautiful version. So we're talking best of live with uh, Paul Brennan in our Wellington studio, and it's so great to, to have you back. And uh, this next track, uh, John Mellencamp, but he's not the John Cougar at this point. No, he, dro he dropped uh, that pretty early on. 
Um, this yeah. uh, is a, a live version of a track that I think was released in the early 80s, 83 maybe, um, Pink Houses, which is a classic Americana song, sort of middle America. L- yeah. Little Pink Houses for you and me. Uh, but mm. this is um, this is a really cool live version that he did uh, at the second inauguration of President Obama, Barack Obama, um, on um, um, outside the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C., with a um, huge uh, African-American choir behind uh, him. In, in fact, you know, you, you, at first you think, what, pink houses with a choir? Mm. But <laughs> it, it works. And um, like I say, it's, it's real Americana. I've always liked the song and I've always liked uh, John Mellencamp because he, he, he does sort of nail that... Uh, you know, average working American kind of yeah. character. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, people are going to love this version of Pink Houses at uh, the Barack Obama inaugural for his second presidency. So that would have been in 2012. Home of the free. I bet Obama loved that version, Paul. Yeah, they're, cla- they're sitting there clapping along. Joe Biden's there, almost compass mentis, enjoying it. He's probably thinking, <laughs> who is Joe. this guy again? I think I've heard this song before. <laughs> Yeah, he, um, that yeah. was a while back, but uh, but uh, a great um, uh, a great um, version of that song, and, and and the other thing you see in the video of that is just the tens and tens of thousands, you know, in that uh, filling that space right from the front of the memorial all the way down. I'm trying to think of all the landmark uh, names of that uh, particular part of Washington D.C. I've been there a few times. Oh, you but, have? Uh, okay. It's absolutely absolutely packed. Yeah, it's. Uh, mm. Uh, just over the road is where all the homeless are, but you don't see them. <laughs> <laughs> no, of course you don't. <laughs> Touch You've got to swing the camera around yes. for that, yeah. Anyway, oh, so Pink out. Houses. Hey, mm. Love the backing uh, vocals on that too. Very strong, gospel sound, fantastic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that gospel comes through a lot in uh, American rock. You know, mm. obviously there's the um, African-American soul music uh, and, and the blues and all of that, but Quite often, it, you, you see it cropping up in, in straight rock as well. I think it works really well. Mm, I do too. And you're right, John Mellencamp, he just he just knew how to write for the people and to feel what the people were feeling. And, and yeah, it's such a... It's, it's so identifiable, like it would never come from any, any other country but the States, would it, that particular sound? Absolutely, yeah. Mm, yeah, he's, he's a nice. classic, absolute classic. Mm. Now, we're moving All to... Right. Are we, a bit of a departure now, aren't we? Uh, so I think you should pop on your cowboy hats and um, yeah, then get your line dancing kit out. We've got uh, well, Harris, Parton and Ronstadt. <laughs> no, I know. I'm, yeah, I'm being silly. Yeah, yeah. Um, th- this is, um, I-, I first came across this years and years ago. Um, it's from a 1999 late show, David Letterman. We, remember, recently we played, I think, an OJ song that was done live on the late show when Letterman was uh, hosting it. Um, he, of course, he wound up a few years ago. This is from 1999, and uh, this is when Emmy Lou Harris, Dolly Parton, and Linda Ronstadt came on stage of the Ed Sullivan Theatre to perform the it's a Neil Young song, isn't it? After the Gold Rush, and yeah, the interesting thing about I mean, th- the voices are heavenly, mm-hmm. as you will hear. There's no other way to describe it. Very touching to listen to, but also there's this very interesting instrument. I think it's called a, uh, a a glass slide guitar, and it's a glass cylinder. It was invented by Thomas Edison, right. and it's a glass cylinder that rotates, and whoever's playing it can place their sort of fingers or their hands at certain parts of the cylinder, which is a, a sort of like this sort of cone shape uh, from one end to the other, and they can sort of play it like a slide guitar, but it has... Obviously, a different sound to a slide guitar. It's more like you know when you 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 get a glass and you sort of um, you know, rotate your your finger around the top of the glass and you sort of get that vibration yes. sound. So but it's sticky. like that, and mm-hmm. it mm. it's a very mystical sound, and it just goes so well with their voices. But this is really say no more. Let's play it. This is just angelic <laughs> stuff. Emmy Lou Harris, Dolly Parton, Linda Ronstadt, with the Neil Young song after the Gold Rush, live on the Letterman Show. That would have been so amazing to see. It's funny, Paul, because I'm a massive fan of these three and I had their album Trio and I just think yep. you couldn't beat those harmonies anywhere in the world, could you? 
with anyone. No, and uh, uh, if you're listening there, you're, you're trying to sort of second guess who's doing what. Obviously, Dolly's <laughs> lead singer doing that. there. But mm-hmm. yeah, um, I, I think Linda Ronstadt is the very high harmony and um, and Amy Lou sort of, um, I, I guess you call them, what, the middle harmony? I, I'm not middle. really sure of the mm. expressions there, but, mm. but it's just so beautiful. If that is Linda Ronstadt, then she's got an even more amazing voice. I thought it might have been Emmy Lou uh, soaring her over the top, but maybe it's not, you know. I that, think it is Linda, yeah. 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 Wow, mm. what what incredible. Like, it's like operatic. It, it, but that that was yep. just, you imagine, that's hair standing on the back of your net material, isn't it? Oh, 100%. Yeah. It, it, you know, yeah. gee, the hour's gone fast. It's already, how can it be two minutes to one o'clock? So um, we've, zip got a, spy. we've got it. It zips by. We've got another song that we can pop in, I think, before the news, though, Paul. Uh, yeah. This is Steely Dan. Where's this reco- Where's this uh, taken from? Th- this is, uh, we've, we've already played a track. I think um, you might have played uh, Boz Skaggs, Low Down Live, which was at the uh, Great American Music Hall venue in San Francisco, which has hosted many of the great acts over the years. And um, this is uh, Steely Dan only, I was just chatting with Shane before, and we were just um, um, sort of recalling that it's hasn't been that long since Steely Dan and obviously um, Walter Becker passed away a few years ago. I started doing live performances because they were so um, creative and complicated that it was very hard to reproduce their studio material live until the sort of uh, the modern tools of music came along, digitization, etc. So um, there's not much of them live before about the mid two thousands. This is from 2005, and um, uh, uh, one of, uh, I guess, uh, everybody's Steely Dan favourites, Kid Charlemagne, with Larry Carlton on the lead guitar. And it really is just such a great version of the song. Listen, if you're not familiar with the lyrics of the song, have a listen, because it tells such an incredible story. Mm. Um, multicolour psychedelic motorhomes and uh, <laughs> is there gas in the car and put those scales away and it's all uh, based <laughs> yeah. around the you know the discovery basically of LSD and the guy I forget the guy's name who mm. invented LSD but um, uh, Kid Charlemagne's great song great live version and a good one to go out on and it's great to be back Leanne, oh, thank you it's so, so lovely, so lovely to have you back, Paul, and well done you. You're an absolute champion because uh, you've been through quite an ordeal and you sound fantastic, so good on you. And we're, we're just going to forget about news for five minutes, okay? I'm sorry, but... Yeah. <laughs>